Hey guys, in this quick little tutorial, I wanted to cover two new features that have arrived for Houdini specifically and Redshift 3.0 in the new alpha builds. And so these two have been requested for a long time. They're, they're kind of small, but really powerful if you actually know about them. They weren't mentioned, they weren't important in the release notes. And so the two features that were recently added is the support for the Houdini material palette system and also a feedback display giving you the log and data for Houdini. So what do I mean by that? So let's first talk about the feedback display. So if you actually come up to make a new window or open it on one of your already open windows, we're going to just make a new window. So let's make a new floating panel and let's drag that over here. And if you right click, on the new window there's an option called redshift render info beneath the render view so if you click this you'll get this new information dialog and so what's neat about this let's clear the log is it gives you log all the log data that you would normally write out into the redshift ins in install log folder and you also get information about each of your active GPUs. So it gives you um, the free uh, VRAM, the overhead geometry, textures, matrices, sprites, rays, photons, Iranian cache, Iranian point cloud, SSS. And you get all these numbers as soon as you start rendering. Now, if, you're, if you guys are watching this and you, you've been using Maya, Cinema 4D, or other apps, you guys have had this forever already. But Houdini did not have this until very recently. Now, this is being all updated. So there's, they're working on a new revamped um, feedback display. But what's neat about the Houdini one is we actually get the log data directly inside our window. So if we hit render here, you'll notice that it starts populating the uh, feedback display with information, like how much VRAM was used, um, and all this data is really important to know if you're going out of core or not. And right here you get detailed information like what block is currently being rendered, how many points were actually created for the uh, photons. So you can see that the total number of photons is, I believe, 1 million. And you can see the search radius, the settings that were used, um, all kinds of information that you would find in the log. So this is really useful for debugging and optimization purposes. So you could look at this while you're rendering and check out if you're going out of core or if you need more um, caustic points, et cetera, et cetera. So this is new. This was recently added. Very powerful, very useful. Like I mentioned, other apps already have something similar. I believe Houdini's the only one that actually hooks directly into the log. So you get all this log data. But as I mentioned, they're working on a revamped version that will be even better than this, we'll, which will have color and highlight important features and give us more data. Um, so yeah, that this is really useful. A lot of people aren't aware that this was recently added to Houdini. And the next thing that's really, really important is the material palette support. So normally, in the past, you weren't able to make custom shader collections. So if you guys are used to using Mantra, you already know that um, the uh, shader palette has all these pre-made presets. So you have the principal shader, the hair shader, glass, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, what's neat is now you can actually add to this, and you can also disable or enable Mantra as one of your selected renders. So what do I mean by that? Is if you go up here to your material context and you hit tab you get all these nodes and options that exist here and what makes this useful is you could actually filter out all this stuff based on only the engine engine you want and so redshift was recently added thanks to the help from side effects if you go into the preferences section and underneath rendering you can enable or disable Redshift or other engines. So let's say I don't want to see all this stuff. You have two ways of filtering. You could either type in 
or you can select only specifically Mantra or specifically Redshift. But to have these options, you must activate it here in your render settings. So I'm going to just disable Mantra for now. And that got rid of all the Mantra nodes that we had in here. And now it's only using Redshift. So I already have a pre-made Redshift node. I just call it the Redshift material. It's the Redshift material packaged up with settings that I like. And so what's awesome about this is you could just drag and drop it in. And now if we go back to our material context, you'll notice that our node is right here, the Redshift material. And it's already ready to go. And you can just drag and drop it on your objects. But let's say there's a, you want to add a, a new custom material. So I like this diamond shader that I have here. So in order to save this into our material palette list in the future, you have to actually come over here, select the shader or the material builder. And then from there, you have to just right click it and go to save. And then there's the option to save to gallery. When you click save to gallery, you'll get this new pop-up with a couple options. And this custom gallery path, you can save this anywhere, but by default, it saves into your documents folder if you're on Windows, inside of your Houdini, where your Houdini uh, environment folder is. There's a new folder called gallery. Inside of here, we'll have this new file called custom.gal, and you can name it whatever you want. I just use the custom name. And what's awesome about this file format and what this lets us do now is you can actually share your custom shader setups with anybody in the community. So I can give this to someone and, and even on the internet and share it on the forums and the internet um, within your own studio. And you could share this with other OSs. So if you're using a Mac or Linux, doesn't matter. You can just share this file and they will get access to all the same shader nodes that you have in your custom setup. So that's really neat. This, this makes um, shader sharing inside of Houdini a lot easier, more convenient instead of having to share HDAs like we had to do in the past. Another really cool thing is you have to just add the name and you can categorize this. And so what do I mean by that? If we were to right click this and go to edit, you can edit the uh, shader you already saved. And you'll notice here that it's, it's going to the same location, the icon it's using, and the category is the way that it's organized. So you can see that it says redshift forward slash generic, and that's why it's using this folder structure. Redshift, generic, redshift material. So what's awesome, so let's come back over here, is we can build entire organized categories just like our mantra um, setup has where it's broken down into specific setups and categories so let's come over here we're going to keep it named diamond the label will be diamond the keywords is what you use to filter it when you're searching so we're going to use rs material redshift refractive diamond and that'll help us um, organize everything here we'll just say refractive diamond material for the description and for the category we're going to make a new category so we're going to put this inside of our redshift um, folder and then we're going to drop a forward slash and this time we're going to put it under refractive so we're going to create a new folder for refractive materials so now if we're satisfied with the way everything is labeled and the icon that we're using just hit accept and now underneath the refractive tab we have diamond and so what's awesome is if you open a new scene this will still be available all of this saves across all your scenes so if you need this diamond material you can just click it drag and drop it and you'll now have it automatically being built inside of your map context and there it is 
So really powerful stuff, super useful. And if you need to ever edit any of these, just come back in here, click edit, and adjust the folder structure, the name, the description, and all of that stuff. The um, shader preview is not available yet. Um, so hopefully in a future build, we'll be able to get shader build uh, shader building. So right now, if you click on the uh, load the material icons, nothing's gonna happen, unfortunately. So once that gets added, that'll make organizing things even better. But yeah, hopefully, you know, this was just a quick little tip about these two new features inside of Houdini using Redshift 3.0 that make things a lot more convenient when working inside of Houdini. We can now save our materials into categories, export them for anyone to use and share. And we can also now get detailed information about our scene using the feedback display. Um, but yeah, thanks again, guys. Ho hopefully you guys just learned how to use these new little quick tips. And, you know, we get to make some cool materials and share them with the community. Thanks.